I'm, I'm told you can still start a fight in a pub in Southland by going in and saying Minnie Dean was innocent. People used to go like that, oh, Minnie Dean, I mean, I mean, those days are gone, I think, but some people were like that, and they were, oh, that's terrible. <laughs> Many myths have become ingrained into the psyche of Southlanders and New Zealanders about baby farmer Minnie Dean, who was hanged in 1895 for the murder of several children. She was the only woman to be officially hanged in New Zealand. Well, the myths, yes, well, one, the, the tangible ones, let's look at the, the grave, nothing will grow on it, that's rubbish. Nothing will grow on her grave, or that she's buried in the middle of the rain road so that she'll never rest in peace. And all sorts of stories about her train journeys and the number of children she allegedly killed. She was such a mythological figure, like the New Zealand equivalent of the witch in Hansel and Gretel. So, and controversial there. By then there'd been a television series on her lawyer, Alf Hanlon, and one of them was um, on, on Minnie Dean's trial and raised questions about whether, she, whether or not she really was guilty or what she was guilty of, if she was guilty. And also pointed to the hysteria and myth-making around her case. So I was interested in where the truth lie, lay, and also in the, the way communities react to scandal and, and build myths and demonise and so on, that, that whole process. Manny Dean was born Wilhelmina McCulloch in 1844 on the 1st of September in Greenock, Scotland, one of five girls to John and Elizabeth McCulloch. She was well educated and had a good upbringing, even though her mother and three of her sisters died before she was 13 years old. The real Minnie Dean was, came to New Zealand as a young woman, at about 16 years old. She arrived in New Zealand with one daughter and pregnant with a second, claiming to be the widow of a doctor and the daughter of a clergyman. In fact, she was the unmarried daughter of a railway engine driver. It is thought that when Minnie came to New Zealand, she came to live in Invercargill with her aunt Granny Kelly, and that she taught at various schools around the district. Soon she would begin teaching at Nightcaps, not far from Dunrobin, where she would meet and in 1872 marry Charles Dean, who was the superintendent of stock at Dunrobin Station. Things did not go well for the Deans from this point onwards. They would move to Etel Creek, an area that was soon to become a backwater, and buy land there not long before a 15-year depression was to hit the country in late 1878. In 1884, Charles Dean was declared bankrupt. Somewhere between 1885 and 1887, Minnie and Charles Dean moved to Winton, and Minnie began taking in unwanted babies for money. There was usually an agreement that she would be paid, but she wasn't always, because usually mothers of unwanted babies haven't got any money. Now at the time, baby farming was quite a legitimate and well-recognised occupation. Her crime was the cause for making baby farming uh, a bad word. But there was also a scandal, an international scandal about baby farming at that time, where overseas women were found, in some cases, to have taken babies for money and killed them and 
you know, it was just a way of getting money. So New Zealand, as it does with every international scandal, immediately tries to find evidence of it around us. About 1893, in response to concern about Mini Dean, they passed the Infant Life Protection Act and women who kept children for more than about two nights who weren't their own had to be registered under the Act. And there were about 80 women in Otago and Southland registered. So it, Minnie Dean certainly wasn't the only one. She wasn't allowed to be registered because she had... Um, She'd had two who died in her care. Yeah, she w the coroner's inquest showed they died of natural causes, but there was concern that, you know, she, her house was too small and she was, you know, had too many children and so on. So she wasn't registered, but there were plenty who were. After some years of taking in unwanted babies, with several mishaps along the way, the actions taken by Minnie Dean from the 29th of April to the 4th of May, 1895, would seal her fate. It, it just got too much for her. Um, and she kind of lost the plot and was being followed closely by the police. As she fell under, under suspicion, then more people came forward and until we find that, uh, according to Hall Jones, a Southern historian, uh, there could have been up to 26 children uh, in her care a a over the years. And they don't know how many of those uh, were passed on or, or were got rid of it in some other way. On the 29th of April, 1895, many started towards Bluff, a small town at the very south of the South Island, and on the next day, as previously arranged, picked up a baby named Dorothy Edith Carter. It was in Bluff that she would also buy a bottle of the soothing opiate laudanum before returning home briefly. On the 2nd of May, Minnie Dean travelled from Lady Barclay, just north of her home, to Lumsden with the baby Carter. It was between Lady Barclay and Lumsden that baby Dorothy Edith Carter died of an overdose of laudanum. Whether it was premeditated murder or an accident is unclear, but the evidence suggests that it wasn't murder. I don't know. Uh, I, 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 think, I think children died in her care. That's, that's a certainty. But uh, when you get used to the word murder, then you have to have um, motive and intent, and I don't think that was the case. There's a lot of evidence raising doubt about her, uh, suggesting that it certainly wasn't premeditated murder, that she had just given the opiate to stop the baby crying when she had picked up the baby at Bluff and taken it back to Winton and didn't want to attract attention. So she had given the baby laudanum, and she had bought laudanum at Bluff, which turned out to be much stronger than the laudanum she normally used, so it may have been a, an accidental overdose. And certainly she took the child home and looked for after it for a couple of days and bathed it and so on, and washed it and fed it. Um, so if she wanted, if she was just taking it, for money, you know, that would be the most convenient place to kill it, not on a train where people could see her. 